I was very, very happy about the opportunity to work with Lisa Batyashvili for the first time, in fact. I've known her for, for a few years already and, and I, I've heard her play on records and in concerts and I, I'm a big fan. I really admire her playing and, and musicianship and personality and it was it was very happy occasion for me to, to work with her. Uh, and is, especially in this repertoire which seems to be such a perfect fit for her. Um, it was a, a joyous experience. I met Lisa for the first time here in Munich uh, about four years ago, I think, um, and that was at a party. Um, but of course, since she got the second prize in the Sibelius competition in Finland when she was still very, very young, I think she was 16 uh, or something like that, when she, she got the prize, she's been very much loved by the Finnish audiences always, and I think she's been playing in Finland several times. So I, I've heard her already um, from those days, but um, this was, as I said, first time we worked together. What happened was that Lisa called me. I was in Milano uh, a couple of months ago, and she called my my mobile phone and and suggested we make this record because it was a sort of new idea. Then, and in fact, we were supposed to play something else in the concerts here with the Bayer Orchestra. Um, but she was wondering if I could um, accept to change the repertoire and, and make this recording with her. And, and of course, I was very happy. Um, I mean, um, to play this repertoire with her makes absolute sense. And, and also, the Shostakovich first violin concerto is one of the great violin concertos in the repertoire. So I was, I was extremely happy. The Cancelli piece has an almost surreal quality to it. Um, and the um, emotional scale of the piece is very particular because it, it mostly deals with some kind of nostalgia for something that we have lost already. There, there is a sort of a tonality in that piece which is essentially nostalgic. Uh, it is a dream that becomes a nightmare from time to time and, and, and there are a few really violent outbursts and then the kind of serene, static, almost objective landscape comes back. And it's a very sort of fascinating piece in the sense that there seems to be a narrative to it. There seems to be a story which is not being told, of course. We, we don't quite know um, what the story is, but, but what we do know is that somebody's telling this uh, and it has happened to somebody. So in this way, it's almost, I mean, the music doesn't sound like anything uh, uh, or by Mahler, but, but there's a Mahlerian quality to, to that music in, in the sense that, that very clearly there's a subject who is telling uh, uh, a particular story or narrative from his private point of view. And we get this sense. And what we don't get is the exact content. And that's left to us as listeners to, to make it up. That makes it very fascinating.